Hello, Tony Burke here again with screencast number six in the series for construction studies students from the University of Westminster to introduce them to Revit 2014. In this screencast we're simply going to add in the internal partitions to our existing model. Okay, so this uh, screen shows the room layout that we're going to be working to and the dimensions that are shown here, I should point out, run from the internal face of the external wall which uh, is this line here, to the center line of our internal partitions. And for other rooms, they run from the center line of the internal partition to the center line of the next internal partition. The reason we're working on center lines for internal partitions is that it's easier to set our partitions out using these dimensions rather than the room dimensions. But I should point out that I have included in the project brief a, um, a sheet which actually shows the room dimensions. So in, in this layout, uh, the dimension lines run from the internal face of the external wall to the face of each partition in turn. And just to explain that, this sheet here shows it in section. So in room layout A, the dimension lines run from the internal face of the external wall to the center line of our partition. And that's the dimension that we're going to be working on when we set out our partitions in the model. But for room layout B, um, the, the room dimensions themselves run from the face of the external wall to the face of the partition. Just to point out that the makeup of the internal partitions, they're 75 mil studs with a 12 and a half mil plasterboard lining on each side, giving a total partition thickness of 100 millimeters. Okay, let's move into Revit then, and this is where we left off in our at the end of our last screencast. We had um, fixed our external walls, we put foundations beneath our external walls, and we'd installed our ground floor slab. So I'm now going to move into the ground floor level floor plan, and um, you can see that there's a section line on there that we put in in our last screencast. I'm going to remove that because it's going to get in the way a little bit. So if I click on it and then just hit delete on the keyboard, a warning comes up. That's OK. I'm going to get rid of it because I can always add it in at a later date. OK, well, let's, um, let's go straight into adding in our internal partitions. So we go up to the architecture tab on the ribbon. We select wall and the... Um, the, the various options come up but we need to click on the down arrow to give us um, the drop down menu to see what other options of wall we've got and as we scroll down through it you'll see that one of the options is a partition with plasterboard 75 mil studs uh, and plasterboard on the other side so I'm going to select that one um, I'm going to have a look at the constraints in the properties palette uh, we can see that by default the location line is set on the wall center line which is exactly what we want and also fortunately the uh, wall dimensions are set as running from the um, the ground floor level which is again is exactly what I want up to uh, the top constraint at the top of the wall which is what I want so on that basis we're, we're ready to go and to start um, installing our internal partitions so with the basic wall selected, we move the crosshairs over to our floor plan and working from this um, top left hand corner, uh, as we pull out the crosshairs, we can see the dimensions opening up. I'm going to type in the dimension I want directly from the keyboard, which in this case is 4950. Uh, hit enter and then I can actually pull out my wall by just dragging the mouse down the screen uh, until the wall intersects with the opposite wall. I click, I hit enter, and there's our first wall uh, installed. Same process again, architecture, wall, uh, select our basic wall and set our starting point, which is the center line of the partition which we just put in. Pull out the dimension that we want which in this case will be 4,000 and then we, we can pull that wall down again but I only want this wall to come out 3,050 millimeters, 3050. Fix that. Same process again. Wall, 
starting down at this intersection here, pull it out 4,000 millimeters. I think that's doing that wrong. Let me start that one again. Starting from here, pulling it out 4,000. Pull that one up a distance of 3,050 again. And this time I'm going to continue the wall round until it intersects with the first wall that we put in. And when I see that purple cross indicating that there is that intersection, I click, I hit enter on the keyboard and we're now starting to, to build our walls um, effectively. Okay, same process again, architecture, wall. This, this time I'm going to work from the bottom right hand corner and I'm going to pull out a distance of 2270. I'm going to pull a wall up. I'm just going to put, briefly pull it up to a random distance. So I'm going to click there, hit enter. That isn't the, the final position of the wall, but um, it will. Uh, I can I can adjust the length of that wall at a later date. Okay, back into architecture and wall again. Uh, this time we are going to add in a, a horizontal wall. Um, I want it to run across there, but as you can see, when I get when I get on the right line, a, a blue broken line appears on the screen. So I'm just going to pull out my uh, that line until it intersects with the first wall that we put in. I'm going to click there. I'm going to pull the wall out from there and I'm going to run it across until it intersects with the last wall that I put in. Click again, hit enter, and now I can actually make some adjustments to uh, the first wall that I put in. When I click on that wall and highlight it, you can see at the end of that wall a little blue sort of dot or circle uh, is visible and it, when I point at it it says drag wall end so I'm going to click and hold and I'm going to drag the end of that wall back until it intersects with this wall here and you can see that purple square appearing I release the mouse I hit enter and now I've, I've got a nice wall in place um, which intersects nicely with my original wall one more wall to go in and I want the wall to, to coincide with the line of this wall running across here but I want it to run across at this point here so working from that point there across to that wall until I see the purple cross indicating the intersection click pull that across until it intersects with the external wall click again and enter okay so we've now put in our uh, internal partitions. Um, if we want to look at that in 3D view, then we can see that our, in our internal partitions run full height to the top of our external walls. We've now got the basic room layout of our um, of our bungalow established. This is our, our lounge diner. This will be our kitchen in here, one bedroom, two bedrooms, the bathroom and our hall and corridor here. Okay, so we're going to leave it there just for the moment and in the next screencast we're going to add in some doors and windows.